So we got a little uh, live uh, broadcast today in which I'll be uh, disassembling uh, a very old amplifier. Uh, this came from a uh, film projector uh, that was built in 1948 and uh, this thing sat in a film case for all of this time. Uh, I don't believe it has a ton of hours on it. Uh, and we're going to be disassembling the entire amplifier today and uh, deciding on what to do with regard to the circuit that we're going to put in it. We have no boundaries with regard to what we can do uh, to uh, rebuild the amplifier. We're not going for preserving any of the original circuit. Um, which may mean we need to change the transformer to use 12AX7s as preamps, uh, tubes. Um, all of the tubes in this are 6 volt. So we may need to uh, do something interesting to uh, make sure that the uh, voltage is correct. And say, hey, hey, Steven, what's up, brother? Uh, so uh, this is what I'm tackling today. And basically this is just going to be ultimately pointing the camera inside this old amplifier and yanking parts out of it. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started right now and I'm sure we'll get a few people to trickle in. This might You might find this interesting. Probably, I'm, I'm gonna get my good old uh, favorite soldering gun out, this cheap one. I didn't spend buckets of money on a soldering gun because, well, the expensive ones uh, I haven't found to need ultimately uh, so I'm sure Stephen can uh, testify to that although he probably owns one of those real expensive Weller kits or something like that uh, you're doing amp repairs constantly let me wipe off my uh, camera lens real quick I apologize for the yeah, there we go uh, so that's uh, that's the plan for today uh, today uh, we have a full staff in today, so I may not get as interrupted as I usually do, uh, given I'm here by myself. So, um, let me give you a good bird's eye view of this uh, amplifier. Um, well, first of all, I'll show you what I've done to start with today. And hello to everybody uh, joining in. I've made a drawing of the original tube layout, you can see, and it's a film projector. So it does have the, um, what do they call them, uh, this uh, CE1C uh, tube, which looks like this. Uh, it's a film, uh, it uses light uh, to, uh, the light from the film, uh, there's a dark and light spots on it, and that's what uh, helps to make the audio from a film made back in 1948. Uh, so that's the deal with that. And we have this other 6J7, which uh, we won't be using likely in the uh, new amp. And we have a beautiful, uh, where are you? Is this the one, is this the one, 6V6? Oh, here's our 5Y3. This beautiful 5Y3 uh, GT, Bell and & Howell. And we may be using this for the uh, new uh, rectifier tube and then probably powering it with uh, 6v6 uh, tubes 6v6 GT I have one of the original ones from the amp you'll notice that these are all marked by Bell and Howell uh, oh you didn't 
three <laughs> yeah okay cool hey Justin what's up brother um, so we have some alternate tubes here that are kind of 6SL7 GT which I believe might have been a preamp tube I don't know if it was used as a uh, phase inverter um, but I have these two beautiful 6V6 GT original Bell and Howell tubes that we will likely use for the amplifier section of the amp. We're hoping to use two 6V6s and then I've got this 6V6 and I have no idea what these tubes were used for in the original circuit. That really is not much of a concern for me um, but we're gonna kinda sort these out uh, once we get the design uh, once we get the design of the amplifier uh, decided upon. Um, now a couple of tools I'll likely be using. Steven you'll know a little bit about this probably uh, or a lot. I'm not sure what method you use. Um, my iron is uh, well, it's not currently heating up. It must be unplugged. It sure is. I thought I had it turned on. We'll get her going. So um, today if I do any soldering or desoldering I'll be using my uh, brass shred a uh, little device here that allows me to clean my uh, soldering gun and get a good tin and I'll use some uh, good old-fashioned solder uh, I believe this is 6040 um, this was made back in the 70s it's very toxic some of the best solder you could ever hope to use the more toxic the better right try not to breathe the smoke I've got a fan going in here so I shouldn't get too uh, inundated with smoke uh, so that's the plan uh, Justin, it's great to see you. I hope you're doing well, bud. We haven't talked. We need to uh, hook up and have a, have a little chat online one of these days. I think we've both been uh, pretty busy. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. I'm going to start cutting, it's unscrewing, removing. I'm going to try and um, do my best to um, keep any of the old parts that um, I feel might be useful in um, possibly a guitar. Uh, to use for a tone pot, uh, tone capacitor, things like that. Most of this stuff is going to go down the road. Um, it has been surfaced at some point, or I'm sorry, the amp has been serviced at some point in its uh, past life. Uh, there are capacitors that are not period correct that I can see have been installed in this, but when you look in this, you'll be shocked. Either the guy that worked on this last time cleaned this thing to a T, uh, or um, this thing just lived a very, very clean life in a very, very clean home. Hey, Brad, what's up? Um, hey, Brad, it was really fun to watch you on uh, Ron's show the other day. Uh, it was really, uh, you always have such a great attitude about music, and everybody's... Uh, uh, involvement in it and your new music and all the stuff that you've heard from you is great. If you all don't know Brad, um, go uh, sub up. I don't know if you can sub up to his, I can't remember how he works. Uh, he's got a, a bunch of stuff going on. Maybe you could share that, uh, Brad, with how people can uh, see you. I know you have your own YouTube channel, but you're involved in so many other projects with different names and things. It's awesome. You and Russ uh, doing some cool stuff. So let's take a look at this. I'll try and keep my eye on the chat uh, if we have any questions or um, more importantly, um, comments or uh, advice on what you feel I should do in removing some of this stuff. We're not going to uh, try and preserve any of these parts and a lot of it, as you'll see, is in a guitar amp situation, completely useless. Um, let me check with my boss real quick. We were having an issue with our computer here at the shop. I want to go make sure, just real quick, <laughs> I want to make sure real quick that the computer is fired up. Hey, Mike? Mike, does that computer come fire back? All right, that problem is uh, being resolved. So, here we go. You can take a look at the uh, amplifier that I have my hands on right now. I need to talk with my cameraman and uh, make sure he's got the camera pointed in the right uh, spot. 
Uh, I had to step away. Oh, you're welcome, Brad. Um, my soldering iron is finally getting warmed up. Um, yeah, look at all that junk. Now, I want to make sure, I mean, let's put this this direction. I'm going to raise this camera up just a bit. I should have pretty good light on it. I'm going to point this camera down as far as I can. So if I'm blowing your head off with my voice, um, there we go. You should have a pretty good look at it. Here are the, uh, the front controls. We've got a volume and a tone and a power switch. Obviously, this thing is really super clean. Um, make sure this thing's pointed in the right direction. I think we've got a good view. There you go. Ooh. Hey, Gary, you made it today. How are you doing, brother? If you all haven't seen Gary lately, uh, <laughs> uh, what a handsome devil. Holy smokes. All right. So we're going to just start tearing this thing apart at this point. Uh, again, I'm not real concerned about preserving any of these old parts. Maybe some of the uh, resistors, uh, you know, I'll do my best to preserve some of those. We'll check them. Um, uh, here's the big bundle from the uh, power transformer. Um, and then the audio transformer is located uh, over here, the output transformer, I believe. Again, this is for a film projector, so it's not something that I, uh, I have uh, tons of knowledge about, which doesn't really matter. Um, this I'm going to snip this off of here. I'll be doing a lot of wire cutting. Now, the cool part is out of this, I'm going to get a lot of this old um, wiring. Uh, so if an old Les Paul or an old Strat or something shows up, I'll have some period correct wiring to uh, recycle. Um, <laughs> uh, it's so good to see you, Hubs. This could be could be interesting. It could be really boring. Um, I'm gonna do my best to uh, keep things exciting today. Uh, this device, I have no idea what it is. If you know what this is, in a film projector, let me know. I haven't modified or altered a film projector uh, in my uh, history as an amp tech. I usually just fix broken stuff, you know, the simple stuff that uh, amp techs get to do. And I use the word simple very loosely. Uh, nice big old long old screw, look at that thing. Let me try and save all that stuff. Um, I have gone through prior to starting this video and drained all of the, the caps uh, so that uh, I'm not going to get zapped or killed working on this thing. I don't have 300 volts running through some capacitors. Some of this might be kind of fun to, uh, to get out of here. I am going to try and preserve as much of this old wiring as I can, even if they're short little pieces. And we're definitely going to reuse this fuse um, socket. There you go. Hello. Uh, just cutting as much out of here as I can. Get a hold of this side. How are you doing today, my friend? Good. Uh, I am doing wonderful. Destroying an old amplifier. Not. Just we're going to turn it into something cool. Use YouTube video myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing live uh, live stream right now. What are you after today? Well, just, I'm just getting a stereo installed. Oh, cool, cool. Yep. This, uh, Stephen, this is a, uh, what is this, a model, uh... Hang on just a moment. Uh, there's a tag on it. I had a model number. Here we go. It's a model. Oh, it's a model number. Um, no, that's a serial. Oh, what did we come up with? Hang on. Uh, 
But where the have you pulled that in there? Because Chris is going to be doing It's a model 179. This is the um, this is the number uh, that the owner of the amp uh, gave me uh, as far as the model number. So it's a it's a, a Bell and Howell model 179. And to be honest, I don't even 100% know that that is 100% correct. But uh, Robin uh, is my neighbor, and he is one of the kindest people you could ever meet. And uh, he um, may be watching this today. Uh, I'm not 100% certain. Boy, am I going to be able to get that out of there. Trying to preserve some of these old parts can be a little bit tricky because this has got solder all galled up on it. Um, getting that nut out of there. Oof. Oh boy. I just don't want to ruin any of this old vintage stuff. I don't believe. This may be threaded on here, maybe reverse. No, let me see if I can. Uh, what I can do here, I'm gonna get another pair of pliers. Oh, you know what? I know that my uh, my apprentice has a pair that I want to grab. I'll borrow these. How you doing? Hello. Do you guys have an FM uh, antenna adapter? XM antenna adapter? FM. FM. Uh, because I've got this type, but then the type that's in my Jeep. Oh, it? yes. Yes. Yeah, do you guys have those? Yeah, we do. Uh, okay, uh, hang on, guys. i got to uh, go help this gentleman. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were... No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, I'm doing a live stream oh, okay. of an amp, but I can take a moment. Okay. Uh, what is that for? To, well, it's this is just a hit. Just for my stereo. Oh, is, is Stu grabbing one? Yeah, he's Well, I didn't talk to him yet. He said he was going to be right back. But. He'll come back, though. It's just, it started off there, now they're shuffling cards around. Yeah, well, okay. Well, he knows how to grab it. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'll just say you now. All right, thank Make you. yourself right at home, bro. Okay. Nice shirt. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's see if I can... can't tell, but this thing might be threaded on here. No. Bag nab it. So what I'm going to do here is try and solder this. Get some of that solder out of there. Hey, Hugh, what's happening? All right. Haven't, uh, haven't recorded any music lately, folks. It's been a while. Been a long while since I've recorded anything. I haven't really felt too creative musically. Uh, so, I figure sometimes it's better just to be a little bit quiet. There we go. You don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all. There we go. That came off of there. That was kind of interesting. It came off way too easy. I don't know if that's going to come off of there with this. I'm trying to preserve this uh, fuse fuse uh, holder. It does not come out of there. Heat it up a little bit more. I was teaching my apprentice to uh, solder the other day, and it was kind of funny. His uh, technique 
when he was soldering to a joint, like he was moving the soldering gun around. <laughs> I kind of laughed. <laughs> he thought he was doing the right thing, but uh, unfortunately, we all know you can't move the heat. You got to keep it solid. All right, are you going to come off of there? Well, I'll be dipped. I wonder if they put that nut and stuff on there prior to putting this in here. Boy. There we go. Got it. Just like that, we saved the part. And look, I didn't see that. There's a wide spot right there in it. <clears throat> Hugh, man, I don't know if you've caught what we're up to today, but I'm just disassembling this old uh, amp from a... Um, and this is from a film projector. Um, let's see. It's got it's on there from here. And this is the old. Um, believe yeah this is the old power supply uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking this nut loose here or the screw loose sorry that's a screw it's not a nut let's see what we got a lot of a lot of wiggly wobbly wire going everywhere I'm trying to preserve uh, a few of these parts and pieces. I'm sure some of these uh, caps and other uh, devices are probably not at spec anymore. And um, just to really keep things on the uh, square, I'm going to throw these old parts in a plastic bag just to keep everything tidy. Um, Cut these couple of pieces loose here. I can kind of cut and cut and get rid of. This could be used for an insulator at some point. We'll save this. These are really handy um, insulators to have. All right, and she's coming apart. Some really cool uh, colors on these wires. This part I am not interested in keeping at all. We'll get rid of that. But I know some of these are coming off the old um, transformer, so I want to preserve as much of the wire as I can so you know, I don't have to extend wires, you know miles but you can see all this beautiful old wire that I'll be able to uh, possibly reuse in different colors that's always nice to uh, replace pieces of wire in a in an old amplifier with the original colored wire if a wire's been damaged or burned up or something is that some type of uh, capacitor I don't know all right this, I believe, help me if I'm wrong, or if you know, but I believe that this part right here is the, uh, I, I'm assuming this might be the original filter capacitor, unless these caps over here are the original filter capacitors. I don't know. I just don't know. And like I said, uh, some of these caps were, uh, this thing had had some work done on it at some point in its life before I got my hands on it. Uh, so you can see these, fil these caps here are definitely not period correct. I'll cut one of these out of here right now. 
They're usually pretty good quality caps. These guys. Pull the old power supply out of here. All nuts and all of this stuff can be used uh, for anchoring or uh, new parts and pieces that will be in the uh, new circuit. And ultimately, by the end of my uh, work today, this amp will be completely empty or void of any wiring at all. Grab a hold of this. little teeny nuts and such I'm gonna cut this loose hope everybody's having a really great what day is it Wednesday solar type check that old thing out now I could go in here and make a big mess and not care too much about what I cut but not going to do that. I'm going to go through this and be real tidy. Here's the old power supply for it. And the way this worked is this would supply power to the amplifier. But on the other side of this, this had a Y on it. And the other part of this power supply would connect to the projector and make the motor and the light and all of that work. Um, and I could possibly show you that to you. We're going to save this. This could be a replacement part. Uh, for uh, something that comes in that we need to fix. Getting all these wires out of the way. Another nice long piece of wire. connected to the transformer so we're gonna keep that it's highly likely that this transformer is gonna go uh, get replaced I don't I'm not a hundred percent certain yet see what size that's not that size looking for a nut driver to remove that looks like it nope 7 16 maybe 11 30 seconds yep well I got lucky it was an 11 30 seconds size nut on there Lucky guess. Hmm. Where'd she go? And again, I'm not too concerned about making too much of a mess in here because uh, uh, some of these old um, resistors might come in handy at some point in time. They're and if I can use some of these parts in a new amplifier, if they're within specs, we'll go ahead and do it. It's interesting because this thing almost looks like it's all been shot with uh, lacquer. Uh, pretty cool.
looks like the center tap off the transformer. Now I can get at that. How's my cameraman doing? Are you guys able to see everything okay? Aside from my hands being right in the middle of everything. Now, what I don't know is if I'll be able to get this out of here with the transformer in there. These two nuts should break it loose. Okay, so that's mounted to the transformer studs, which means I'm going to have to, there we go, here's what we can do. Okay, we're going to have to get some of this other stuff broke loose. What a mess. This is a wiring nightmare. Steven, do you get to do this sort of thing very often? If you're still here, um, I don't expect everybody to hang out for this entire broadcast, man. We all got jobs and lives to do. Do you get to um, modify amps very often, or are you just primarily doing repair work? Who knows what that capacitor rating is and what its tolerances are. Here it is. And I will probably ruin this pair of uh, wire snippers working on this thing today. Man, this wiring on this has just been done so amazingly precise. Let's see if that looks like that was uh, it's rubber coated uh, wire versus uh, fabric. Okay, I'm gonna cut all this loose. Sometimes there's just not a real good way to know exactly where to where to start. I'll just keep removing stuff. Good old domino. These things are usually in really good shape. They hardly ever fail. They really almost never fail. cautious of is to not cut any of the wires from the the transformer I know everybody oh, transformer you got to replace the trans they're really not that expensive to replace to be honest in the scheme of things when it comes in this world to buying a new amplifier but go buy some of this threaded wire <laughs> that stuff can get a little spendy
Okay. So I can see the power going to that. So I want to get this out of here. And it appears that I can get that out of there. Where is my favorite little flathead screwdriver? Here it is. Let's see what happens here. It's gonna pop out of there. Old school, look at that. This was uh, connected to the uh, input jack for the microphone. Has a microphone input. Hey Zach, what's happening, brother? How are you doing today, man? My uh, Zach, just as so you know, man, my uh, my sensor just expired, so I'm doing the old finger poke until I can get home and change my uh, change my Dexcom G6, bro. <laughs> kind of fun. I get to poke my finger today. In fact, I probably should think about doing that here pretty quick. these wires coming loose from the transformer once I get all these cut loose I'll be able to pull the transformer off of here and uh, and get this cap I believe this is a filter cap I don't know but there's gonna come a moment when all of this stuff is just gonna come like wide become wide open whole bunch of this is just gonna go bling one by one I'm taking wire here we go where's this one headed where are you headed So at this point, I can get the uh, power, the old existing original power switch out of here. Looks like. And I do believe this is original. Yeah. Epiphonium, welcome, brother. Ed, what's happening? Thanks y'all for hanging with me today. I hope uh, you find might find this a little interesting. Uh, it's not music. <laughs> Just a, and it's not average daily stuff that I do here at my shop. I'm not disassembling amplifiers too terribly often. All these switches and such have um, uh, lock washers, which is uh, unlike modern built guitars, where they don't put lock washers behind volume pots and things like that. <laughs> I find that hilarious and sad.
Interesting. Boy, the. There we go. And we'll save this uh, power switch for the amplifier when we uh, get the circuit all built. So this gentleman will have a neat old power switch. Seems to be in really great shape. It works perfectly. The amp worked just fine. <laughs> there she is. Pretty cool, huh? We'll see if we decide. What does it say on it? Uh, and lab instrument made in the USA. CH. Get rid of this guck. Alright, so now I'm getting to a point where I can kind of start to get at some wires here that have been either cut or get some of this stuff out of my way. I'll tell you what, this is nothing like plumbing a house. And I've done plenty of that. If you guys can hear that music uh, playing in the background, that would be my boss's new album. Has some good old fashioned Americana background music. We listen to Americana music here all day, every day. I used to be a fan of it. I'm not so much anymore. <laughs> It's like a uh, surgery. There we go with one of our new caps. It's a Sprague. That's good. 0 0.01 microfarad at uh, 600 volts. That might come in handy one day. If it still works. Amplifier, you got nuts usually. He said nuts. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Poo. Oh. Got no sound. Oh, there it went. Okay. Now the uh, transformer is all loose. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, George. Huh. Our. It looks like our internet is uh, taking a little bit of a dive and or uh, OBS is giving me some uh, issues. Of course, when I get uh, to a point where I've been streaming for a little while and get, it gets interesting, um, that's when OBS will uh, make sure. Um, hoping everything is still uh, video-wise still working. Everybody seeing stuff all right and hearing okay? Any uh, buffering? Yeah, we just listened to anything recorded basically before 1970 or 1965, uh, which I could leave it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and leave that transformer out of there, but I am going to reinstall the 
washers and such on this, I think. Where'd you go? some parts fell here on the bench well, I'm not too worried about that we'll just go ahead and yeah error YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such viewers will experience buffers Have I lost my stream, guys? Is it buffering? Okay, I think, uh, cool, well, it seems to have uh, solved itself, its problem, whatever. Get this out of here. Now, of course, when I'm done removing all of this stuff on the tube sockets, we're going to reuse all of the tube sockets that we can. Uh, so, um, alright, there's a couple more little washers and... There we go. Alright. Hopefully we're doing okay with it. I'm having to do this over Wi-Fi because uh, our Wi-Fi router uh, doesn't have enough ports on it to uh, get me internet like solid to the uh, router for, for not to do stuff uh, over Wi-Fi but uh, when I'm at work I have to do that which is fine you just experience stuff like this to the uh, other half of this thing I can see that See if we can uh, break this loose. Open widget. That's funny. 
Hey, roadies, what's up? How you doing, brother? How we doing, roadie? Doggone it. I'm guessing this uh, video is probably not very good. Rody, you guys been uh, live streaming uh, rehearsals recently? I haven't seen anything. My my notifications generally work pretty good. I hope you have. You guys seem to really have a good time with doing that. A great way to uh, be able to perform for folks and. at this point is to get this uh interesting there we go it's like i got one piece of wire holding this thing in here it's like uncle doug and guitologist and other uh guys bandersant tv i believe working on amps they don't show all this stuff because it's actually kind of boring um, and I think that they uh, they don't want a lot of people to see them doing this sort of thing to old amplifiers be honest another old uh, domino cap neato let's see Oh, cool, cool. Trust the notification. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm hoping... Uh, she's telling me to open a widget. I don't know if there's anything I can do. Uh, I wonder if I refresh this page if I'll lose everybody. I'm not going to try it. I'm just going to keep going and we'll deal with it. All right. So, here are here are the old speaker outputs. Look at that jack right there. And this one has a cap on it. We're going to go ahead and remove these so that we have a nice clean slate to work from. Should be able to get a hold of this. Well, believe me, they got this one on here tight enough. Wow. Holy smokes. Eh, we'll deal with that in a bit when I get all this rest of this stuff out of the way. Let's get this out of here. Again, we're just going to rebuild a new amp circuit in this. We're going to turn this into a different amplifier. Now, uh, sometimes uh, wire cutters get uh, kind of bound up a little bit. This stuff works great for uh, loosening them up. 
Moving on. I'm kind of, I'm not really doing this in any specific order, as you can probably tell. Because ultimately, again, uh, obviously this amp, I doubt that was done at the factory. Um, I doubt. Yeah, that's a far more modern type of screw, it's black. So who knows when this thing was uh, worked on last. Let's see, I've got another screw right here on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of these. Maybe a bunch of this will just fall out of here. Definitely could feel it getting loose. Hmm. Oh yeah, we might get a whole bunch of stuff coming out of here and all in one movement here. Let's see what happens. I want to uh, cut this old black beauty. Cut some wires loose here. Hey William, what's up? William, I am in Northeast Oregon. I'm in, I live in a little town called La Grand, Grand, Oregon. Um, and oh, and by the way, um, last night, um, I believe it was last night, the band, the Aristocrats, Guthrie Govan. Brian Beller, Marco Meneman drove right through, and they didn't stop and have a beer with me. Drove literally right through my, yeah, my hat, my, by, right by my plate. Check my settings here real quick. Give me a moment. I'm going to see if I can fix something here. Let's make my uh, 5,000. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Uh, okay. This might be better. Uh, Michael, what's up? Hey, brother. Cheers. You having a beer right at the moment? Uh, yeah, the aristocrats drove literally right through Legrand. 
I sent Brian Beller a, a message uh, the other day and said, hey, you know, if you got time, stop in and let's have a beer or a jam. He didn't get back to me on that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Eugene. Oh, another uh, Oregon boy. I love it. We're going to hit 103 today, it's temperature wise. I, I assume you guys are getting uh, pretty warm up that way, also. But you know what happens when you assume, right? You're over there near, um, uh, that part of the state. A couple other guys, uh, that, uh, live here in Oregon. You guys are all over on the west side. Amazing how this wiring, how uh, completely. Uh... Ooh. Okay, that's kind of getting a little wonky there. But this right here is one of the output jacks, and I, I don't want to hurt it, but we are going to replace them with. Uh... Oh, I see what's happening. So yeah, that's just getting loose here. I wonder if I'll be able to get those off of there without having to cut them. Uh, 84, wow. Yeah. Oh, you're, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been cool. I would love to shake Guthrie Govan's hand, man. That guy's such a remarkable musician um, and my, I do not aspire to uh, play at that level um, incredible Here's a pile of wire I've gotten out of here so far. All this stuff. Pretty cool. Yeah. Some fender oil. <laughs> um, we've kind of talked a little bit about what we might want to do. Uh, in rebuilding this circuit um, and the type of circuit and we're talking about you know a 50s era fender uh, style circuit kind of set the bar back in the day in the day um, you know there's a boatload of um, fender circuits that are very popular for uh, guys that play um, a lot of it's just historical popularity and sentiment I think it's not like they're Mesa boogies right they're louder than Mesa boogies <laughs> some cases <laughs> and I apologize if the, the stream isn't coming across real clearly uh, there's nothing I can do about it.
You guys sick of watching somebody cut wires yet? <laughs> Getting poked. There's the other uh, replaced capacitor. Looks like it's a Sprig Adams, the .01. Some of this stuff is starting to reveal its itself kind of starting to see stuff in here now can you imagine wiring this thing any of you yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. They're playing, I believe, at the Star Theater in Portland tonight. And because of my work schedule and I have guitar students, um, I can't, I couldn't go. Uh, couldn't uh, couldn't make time for it. Certainly would have loved to have seen them play. <laughs> Starting to get oh one piece at a time. One piece at a time is coming out of here. Where are you going now? I can get this junk out of my way. Oh, that's. get at. Forgive me for getting quiet, but I'm just cutting by the cutting and cutting and cutting. Cutting and cutting and cutting. My goodness. Yeah. 
Yeah, dude. This is one of the most complicated circuits I've ever seen with regard to uh, being a, a tube device. But keep in mind, this was a film projector, so there's a lot of this that has to do with uh, converting light to sound, or dark to sound, as it were. Sitting here chopping away. And this is amazing how this stuff is crammed in here. And this is going to the transformer. Oops, sorry. I don't know how well this stream is uh, going. Keep in mind that um, once I'm done removing all of this uh, stuff, I mean, see how that thing was routed? Um, once I'm done removing all of this stuff, um, I'm going to have to go in and clean up a bunch of the tube sockets, um, which will be a whole lot of fun. And I'm hoping my shot is uh, adequate to keep everything... Uh, interesting okay so now Valkyrie welcome brother that disassembled from the gotten that disassembled all right now I can start getting some of these highly sought after I don't think actually think these are the ones but Look at that bad boy. 22 microfarad sprig. Sprig Adams. And this one be in a 0.05. Look at that. Hey, Charlie. Charlie, I am so sorry, man. Uh, I don't know what's going on with our ISP. Probably getting all used up from other people doing Facebook and stuff, I guess, here. 
probably the case. Oh, can get another port and create some interest. Uh, that's the only time I have problems with my with my uh, live streams. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Well, I'm going to go ahead and continue, I guess. Uh, I can just keep working. Let me know if things get real bad. circuit boards before <laughs> before uh, modern circuit boards okay see that okay that's where my limiting movement is kind of like uh, remodeling a house and you can just start knocking down walls hey, hey I got it this could be a pretty valuable part I have no idea what it is I'll have to look it up Twenty-five, four, four, fifty. I don't know, but it's uh, very similar to this. Sixteen, sixteen, eight. So yeah, it's the oil, uh, oil caps. Good old-fashioned oil can caps. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. You guys, if I keep pausing, let me know. Yeah, yeah, and they're uh, oil filled, and this is not a valuable part. Um, I kind of knew that's what they were. Just. Uh, too busy cutting. <laughs> now that I've got a lot of this stuff uh, kind of cut loose and out of here, I can start almost down to the down to the bare chassis. Almost. Nope. Another big bad boy. Sprague 22 microfarad at 200 volts. Or it's a 0.22. 
That, I believe, would be one that uh, somebody would use in an uh, old vintage Les Paul, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah, it's a doohickey, all right. One of those doohickeys. <laughs> Thingamajigger. And another point two two. Steven, if you're still here, <laughs> um, on tone caps for uh, guitars, I don't do a lot of that type of uh, alterations, although I do have a couple here. Who can tell me if uh, this capacitor would be one that someone might uh, want to uh, use on a guitar? Hopefully you can see it. It's a 0.22 microfarad. Is that something all the vintage boys would love to put in your guitar? I'm going to go ahead and pull this insulator out of here. Shield, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think uh, here. My brain's on kind of... My brain's on a bit of a sensory overload at the moment after all of this. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, output transformer off of here. I believe this is an output transformer. It is right... In, uh, Oh, couldn't tell you exactly. You ever seen something like that come out of an amplifier? Look at that. The ingenuity. Incredible. go ahead and leave that although we might be using this as, as a pilot light That would be fun, Gary. Yeah. The old classic bulbs. We're about down to nothing. Yep, just about there. Pretty close to a bare chassis. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Look at all this cool wire. Yeah, that's real neat, huh? Yeah, old Wolfish, old Wolfish stuff. We want to use 12x7s in this. We want to We're swap gonna something out. This will work. It will. Yeah, because 12x7s are six and six. There's two six volt filaments in a 12x7. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant engineering. Okay. I just got to figure out which wires are the filaments. I know that's one of them. That's the rectifier filaments there. They're five volts. And I believe one of these here is a 
I'll have to figure out which one of the other wires is the, uh, these are probably the AC in. He's got to so I'll have to figure that out, but that's no biggie. Yeah. Well, a thousand I thought, times over the years. Okay. Okay. Because I would, I, I would like to use 12 inch 7 in the preamp yeah, yeah, section yeah, yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two 12 inch 7s and, and uh, two 66s and one 5x3. Yeah, there we go. Then there'll be a real amp. Uh, I better get back to my project. Uh -oh. Looks like you're doing the right thing there. Yeah. Basically, it's a slight build amp from scratch. Yeah. We just yeah. got to determine all the connections on this. Yep. I know. We, oh, this yeah, this makes good sense. I already got it halfway figured out here. Yeah, I can use the voltmeter to figure 99% of that out. Okay. Kind of a cool little uh, grounding niche. Yeah, I drained all the caps before I got started, guys. I had certainly know better than that. Um, the thing hadn't been powered up for uh, well over a week, uh, but if you assume that your caps don't have power, having not been fired up for a couple of weeks, guess again, especially Marshall's. There must be something in that name. Uh, but, uh, yeah, those are notorious for killing people. 300 volts hits your heart, you're dead. Now, at this point, I'm kind of being just careful uh, to try and save some of this wire and our, you, you guys that work on amps or if you've done much electronic work uh, it's really not that vital I got a ton of but these little pieces man they really come in handy in a in a pinch Let's say you got a 52 telly that comes in and that's the piece of wire going from the tone pot to the volume pot or from the output jack to the the volume control you got it you can you can exactly replicate what was used originally, um, which preserves the authenticity of the instrument. And I do bag all this stuff up and keep it, and we'll be using it eventually. And even in a newer guitar, I'd rather use this than you know some rubber coated. So stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with modern wire. Nothing. It just looks cool and I feel better about it. Incredible circuit, man. There's so much shit going on in this. Excuse the French. By the way, you are allowed to type cuss words if you choose to. Yeah. Okay, I'm just about done here. Just about all disassembled. Just about.
my hat right in the way. Probably. Again, I believe we're going to likely put a pilot light right here and or right here. Um, all of the labeling is going to stay the same on this. And ultimately, we're going to have a volume and a tone control on these. And we will likely reuse these pots um, just to keep everything as period correct as we can. Look at that. A little resistor got left behind. Again, guys, I have no idea uh, if uh, the stream is uh, still going or not. Um, my computer is telling me it doesn't have good, good reception. Okay, thanks Preston. Yeah, it just keeps telling me that I don't have good... Uh... Good reception. Look at that old output jack. Or input jack. This is an input jack. And it's got an insulator on here. And these little washers right here are really handy. They can screw you over if you use them incorrectly. But that keeps the... Uh, the ground circuit from grounding this to the chassis. Uh, this was the ground on that, and that was uh, part of. Where did you go? So the way this worked was that went into there and attached it to the ground circuit of the amplifier. Um, but these little washers like this can be really nice for insulating or insulation, I should say. We may reuse this um, jack as the uh, jack for the amplifier. We shall see. Uh, these pots may not work. May not. I don't know yet. Let's pull one loose and see what they look like. These little... Uh, Hershey chocolate colored knobs. These babies are hard to find. These babies can be a nightmare to find. Of course, if you have a, what do you call it, those printers that'll print stuff, you could probably make some. Pull these pots loose. Take a look at them. Ooh.
These are like 5 8 inch uh, nuts on the outsides of these. And again, back in the old days, they actually used a lock washer on a volume control. If any of you have bought a new guitar, oh, that's what that is. That's a ground. Okay, so yeah, we can we can reuse this. That's an ingenious way. Look at that mess of wire. Hand done. This was all hand wired. All that stuff that I just removed out of it, somebody probably spent not well, most part of a day. Four, 707 seventh week 1947 is what I believe that means 304 would be the manufacturer which probably is uh, Bell and Howell uh -huh. does not tell me what the uh, although I can probably find that out I don't know a hundred percent I don't know 100% I'd love to get this out of here, but boy, it's uh, it is really stuck. I'll cut this out. And, uh, got a resistor and a, and a cap. These tube sockets are likely not going to be reused right here. These two. That had to do with the old film sound. We will probably be deleting these. I apologize if my hat's right in the middle of the movie. An old domino cap. Kind of cool. Pretty cool little part. And, oh yeah, and the output jack. Oh, unfortunately, this one got cracked. We'll go ahead and get it out of here. We're gonna remove these and probably plug one and uh, let me put this nut back on the old uh, output jack. So that's what she looks like. I'm going to see what I can do about getting this off of there, although we might just drill it out. What a mess. Let's pull this pot off of here real quick to finish things up. So it looks like I've been working on this for going on... Wow, almost two hours just to get the, the cavity stripped. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Again, 
304-739. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, anybody else who might know better than me, but 39th week of 1947. Am I incorrect in that? 304 being the uh, manufacturer number for, I'm hoping, uh, Bell and Howell. Don't know. I don't have all that stuff memorized. back on this one. We may leave one of these because we only need one output jack on this. However, we could get real interesting. At this point we have a bare chassis basically that we can do with whatever we want. What would you put in this chassis is my question. What circuit would you put in here? If it was your choice, you could put any any circuit that would fit in here in here. What would you do? like to put something in here that uh, would have um, a good bit of grit in it. Yep. This ain't going to be a powerful one. We're going to do two 6v6s for the power amp, likely, on this. You don't have a whole lot of room. Uh, it's not terribly deep. Uh, the dimensions... Here are the dimensions. Ten and three quarters by, let's just call it four and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And this can come completely out of there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of there now. We may end up using it, who knows. But these holes through the uh, Whew. That bad boy doesn't want to come loose. Bigger screwdriver. Well, that's interesting. Is that my big number? Yeah. That's a screwdriver. There we go. she is all right guys 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this will probably end up with a 6B6 and um, 12X7. This will likely end up becoming about a 10 watt, 8 to 10 watt uh, amplifier, preamp and amplifier. And uh, we can do that. Uh, so I want to say thank you all for hanging with me today. I apologize if the, uh, the uh, stream wasn't real clear. Um, it seems to have been uh, okay uh, for uh, the last little bit. Um, so, uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. And that's ultimately what, um, that's ultimately Richard, we saw the one, uh, the one that we have over there that the same gentleman owns, and it's a little harp amp, and it sounds great. Uh, so, here we go. Y'all have a really wonderful, happy Wednesday. Oh, and my sister's coming to visit me in two days. I'm so excited. I haven't seen her for quite some time. Peace, y'all.